Are you a single monitor streamer tired of not being able to keep an eye on your stream chat when you're live streaming? You know, the people talking to you without having to set up, what, like a phone in a corner or a tablet or something? I've often made suggestions like that of setting up a little tablet or iPad or keeping your phone on a dock so you can see your stream chat. But of course, then you can't use your phone as touch portal or for a webcam. I just don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to have a single monitor going or streaming and to still talk to the people who are taking the time to watch you go live. And that is okay. Don't let anyone feel bad. Make make you feel bad for that. They can feel bad. Don't let, let anyone make you feel bad for that. Whether you can't afford one, you just don't want one, you don't have the space, it just isn't what you want, it doesn't matter. Today I'm showing you kind of two options for having your Twitch chat on your stream while you're streaming with a single monitor. And I think it's pretty cool. I'm Eubles Vox, the stream professor, and before we jump into the video, I have an ask for once. I have launched a new gaming channel. It's called Lost Saves. It's dedicated to the nostalgia, the good feelings, the fun times, the joy of gaming, the passion of gaming, rather than all the toxicity that comes up and all of the obsession over balance patches and all that goodness, just talking about the good old games and the people that played them. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And so if that kind of content is up your alley, and only if it is, go check out my content over there. At least at the time of recording, I posted a video that's kind of like a stream highlights of me saying goodbye to the Xbox 360 servers of Halo 3. I posted a lovely video essay of Call of Duty 4 in 2022 and what that experience is like and how you can get the best experience playing it on PC. You'll see a little bit of that in this video. And I just posted a classic gameplay commentary talking about why nostalgia is misleading to most people. Go check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, let's jump into the tutorial. So the primary tool we're going to be focusing on for this video is available on GitHub, linked below. It is called Transparent Twitch Chat Overlay. It is a .NET application for Windows, which will just give you a transparent window over top of any windowed or borderless windowed game. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for full screen games. However, with modern Windows updates and NVIDIA driver updates, running games as windowed or borderless windowed isn't really a problem anymore. Like used to, there was issues with VSync and latency and things like that. Those are really non-issues these days. Once you have downloaded and installed it, uh, it will pop up just this kind of transparent window with some hints and pointers and things like that, but obviously not show any chat yet. Click the little settings icon in the top left hand corner of the window. And here we can really start changing how this things works. So first and foremost, you got to put in your username for Twitch. This is not a tool that requires you to log in or authenticate with your Twitch or anything like that, which is really nice. Um, and you can even just check the checkbox to show whenever they redeem channel points and you just got to click get channel ID. It does that automatically. Again, you don't have to log in or anything. So there's no security risk here because chat is publicly available and then it will start loading your chat and you can have people jump in and test it out with you. Then of course you have the option to fade chat. So if you're really focused on the game, you can set a time at which point it's measured in seconds that chat kind of disappears on its own. By default, it's set to two minutes. Or if you're really focused on your stream and the game isn't quite as important, you can just leave it up all the time. So you say you do happen to get focused on your game for a minute, you can still go back and reference chat that may have otherwise disappeared. I do love that. In filter settings, you have some options for like blocking which users show up, whether you show bot messages or not, filtering words, things like that. I don't really mess with that here. You can enable a sound. You can turn on a sound that pings whenever a chat message comes through. If you've ever looked at certain cam sites, these are very prevalent. It would not make a whole lot of sense in the context of a Twitch stream because that's then going to loop back to your stream. It's great for letting you know a message came through, but it would probably annoy your viewers at a certain point. They have three different sounds available with two different volumes. It's cool that the option is there. I just personally wouldn't recommend using it. And then you have some themes, which customizes whether you have it show up as just text over a transparent background, whether you load a dark theme that has kind of a dark gray background behind the text. You have a few different ways of displaying it, and then it has a couple different ways of actually loading your chat, be it CapChat, which is a tool that loads chat uh, on its own, or you can do the typical Twitch pop-out URL, or if you have another tool that accesses Twitch chat in some other way, you can actually input the URL for that there. Then under general settings, you have an option to auto hide the borders of the window. So once you're actually in your game, you don't have the window there. It's just the chat, which is pretty nice. It makes it nice and seamless. And then you get some control over the tray icons and things like that. So that is the basics for just setting up your chat overlay. You can resize the window, position it where you want, hide the borders, then launch your game into windowed or borderless mode and play your game and stream as usual. And if you're using display capture or game capture with overlays, you can theoretically get it to capture the chat and showcase it on your stream as well if you'd like, or you can select selectively hide it. Display capture is pretty much always going to show it, however, so keep that in mind. 
this is pretty cool. Like, I, I demoed it with a few people popping in my chat just to say hi and test things out and submit some spam as I played a game. It made it super easy to still focus on the game and get some kills while I was seeing chat and responding to them, and that was awesome. You cannot actually message in chat in this chat box. That is an important note. But you can also take it a step further so you can fully keep an eye on your stream, and that is with that widgets settings in the settings menu. With the widgets, you can paste in URLs of other widgets from providers to add things to your overlays. So that sounds super vague, but specifically, you can get alerts. So follow, subscribe, raid, host, bits, whatever. If you use an alert service, like say Stream Elements, if you have your alerts on their own scene in Stream Elements and you can actually just copy them out to a new scene, then you can copy that Stream Elements you know, URL like you would a browser source in OBS Studio, and it will make a browser source window here on your desktop that you can then hide the borders of and overlay on top of your game and just position it correctly. And while you're gaming, you'll see your alerts and you'll know who subscribes and follows and all that stuff, which is really cool. Now this does get kind of redundant in that again, since it's a windowed mode game, if you're using display capture, it will show this on your stream. Now that's one less element you have to juggle in OBS, but if you're used to running your alerts in OBS, then you'll have to turn those off and mute the sounds or else you'll be getting double dose of alerts. Uh, it will still play the sounds regardless, so even if you don't have it showing in your OBS capture and you have it added as a browser source in OBS, you'll still need to mute the audio in the browser source. Now, of course, my stream elements uh, subscriber alerts are super overbearing, so I had to make a giant window because it's pop-ups that literally take over the screen, which is not ideal, but your typical alert fashion of like a graphic rolling in from the top and text overlay, and like you can make that pretty small and put it in a corner and still have it to where you can keep track of who is subscribing and things like that, which is absolutely huge. Now you can use this to try to implement, say restream chat or YouTube chat in general and things like that. I tried adding my overall chat widget from stream elements with this just on its own dedicated scene and I couldn't really get it to show up. But again, my sizing is very specific and weird. So that may depend on how you have yours set up, but you can use it to implement YouTube chat and things like that as well. There is a second way you can do all of this, but it doesn't directly involve OBS, which is why it's number two, but also maybe not what you're looking for in that the Gamecaster team, which is formerly known as XSplit Gamecaster, they branched off as their own thing, now they're just Gamecaster. They have actually developed a widget for the Xbox Game Bar. So while we typically recommend turning that off for streaming and things like that, the Game Bar can overlay on top of your game and show lots of information about your system, and it can specifically show your Twitch chat if you have the Gamecaster widget bar. Now, both applications are free to some extent. However, the Game Bar widget doesn't work unless you have Gamecaster running. So theoretically, you can still use this with OBS Studio if you just open Gamecaster and sign in with your Twitch and then minimize it and don't do anything. And then you can add the Twitch chat to it. Uh, and with this method, OBS does not see the Xbox Game Bar whatsoever. So you can't capture the chat if you wanted to, and I couldn't even capture it with screen. I'd use phone captures to show it to you, which isn't ideal. Uh, but you can do it that way if you want to integrate with the Xbox Game Bar, and then you can add in a bunch of different widgets from Gamecaster, as well as your system performance and all the normal stuff from Xbox Game Bar. There's actually like a dozen or so Xbox Game Bar widgets. Unfortunately, none of them are just a dedicated Twitch widget. Maybe someone can develop it and throw it up on the Microsoft Store or whatever, but for now, you have to have Gamecaster installed. So that's why it's kind of thrown it here at the end because it's not necessarily an ideal solution. I do love the transparent Twitch chat overlay here option, though. I said that weird. The option here, though, and I, I just wanted to recommend it because I get a lot of questions about juggling a stream with a single monitor, and this won't allow you, like, OBS itself doesn't have an overlay, so this won't allow you to monitor OBS's performance or anything like that, but if you just want a basic see your chat and your alerts, this is a fantastic option. I do hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. It was super quick, easy. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm the stream professor, Epos Fox. I cannot talk today. A reminder, go check out my gaming channel. If that's your thing, if it's not, please don't go check it out. Uh, but if you're interested in gaming nostalgia and classic FPS titles and things like that, go give it a, go give it a watch or subscribe. Maybe it would mean the world to me. And otherwise, join us on Discord, discord.gg slash Fox. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Remember, be kind, rewind. I did it again. I, I'm wearing the, I had to say be kind, rewind, because I'm wearing the Blockbuster shirt, but I just did like 20 outros again. I got to stop doing that. Bad, bad content creator gets the bonk. My bread's over there or I'd give you the bread bonk, but whatever. Bye.